Well, hi guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today, well, you probably already saw when I did the prepping for my pressure canning video, um, I am gonna be canning chicken thighs, raw pack, bone and skin on. And I'm doing it in pipe jars, so this is the perfect amount to have soup for two, and or if I have soup, I usually have it two days in a row. Um, that's perfect size. And then I can add all my aromatics and my vegetables and everything at the time when I open the jar. The meat is gonna produce its own juices as well. And I'm referencing the ball canning book. This is the complete book of home preserving. So um, I reference the time on raw pack bone in chicken or poultry. Um, and it's gonna can in these pint jars for 65 minutes. The reason being the bone is uh, acts like the hollow, so it doesn't take as long as just meat in the jar. If it was strictly meat and no bone, it would be 75 minutes for pints. So this is gonna go really quickly, guys. Come on in and I'll show you how I did it and how I'm doing it. I've gotta heat up some water for my lids. I've already got my lids and rings in here, some of them tattler, some of them button top. Okay, you wanna see how I do it? Okay, so I've got my jars, and these pieces of chicken are pretty, uh, they're pretty small. So it's up to you how much of the fat you want. It definitely adds flavor, so you're just gonna get these in here. That's why it's really important that you, look, these aren't very big. These, these are pretty small little thighs. You might even get three of the smaller ones in the jar because uh, that's a really tiny one as well. So this jar has three. I fill up my jar with um, water, but I'm going to get all the jars packed with chicken first, and then we can do the rest of that. We're going to go ahead and I put the skin against the outside of the jar so you don't get that schmuck that sometimes happens with... Um, canning raw packing chicken and or any kind of meat actually actually I don't think I want I don't think I want three in that one two is plenty I believe if there's a little itty bitty guy maybe mm, I'm thinking I still think two is plenty per jar. I'm just, I'm just gonna keep it at that. Um, have at least, unless they're super little. But two thighs per jar, or like I said, if there's an itty bitty, we can put an itty in there. But that's, I had planned on two per jar, and then, um, Like I said, you just are gonna fold that chicken up, just like that. So you're gonna have quite a bit of broth in here, but when I open this, typically what I'll do is I'm gonna make chicken and dumplings for one or two, or a, a quick and easy chicken noodle soup, and I just add a few vegetables. Quite often it's Thrive because it's super easy and convenient to add Thrive, and, and I don't have to I don't have to peel them, chop them, nothing. And okay. Yeah, I think that's how I'm gonna do it. Just two per jar. So, I have plenty of jars. I, um, thankfully, you know, I've been a canner for so many years that you do, you, you acquire jars over the years and I just had somebody gift me some more jars because I had sold a bunch of jars last year. And now you can't get a hold of jars. So, okay, this is the last one and I'll show you how okay, I get the uh, jars cleaned off and I'm gonna discard. There's three thighs left for me for dinner to make something else. Okay, now go, discard the gloves. Now I've got my hot water and you can, you can wipe the rim of your jar with vinegar if you like, but I don't believe it's necessary. Each jar is gonna get the same treatment. I'm gonna put 
a heaping teaspoon of chicken bouillon and you use whatever brand. This is just plain, cool, filtered water. And we're gonna fill the jar and we are gonna debubble. And um, so as soon as you stick that debubbler tool down in there, you end up finding out you have all kinds of air pockets in that jar. So same thing with every single jar. It's going to be the same go round. Okay. So we'll get the, and you, I am going to leave an inch of headspace just because I know that this jar is going to keep filled and my chicken will totally be under broth, which is what makes me happy. Okay. Um, um, these are going to be a tattler lid. And Tatler lids, uh, if you guys are new to using them, I know a lot of you are trying to move over to that. It's got a two-piece gasket and lid, and so you're going to put that on. You center it on there nice and centered. You're going to take your ring, keep that centered. You're going to tighten like you normally would, and then back off about a quarter of an inch. And that's all there is to raw packing chicken. All right, in the canner, this goes for the next one. And it'll be seven pint jars. Okay guys, so I've got seven pints of the chicken in the canner. I just turned the burner on, so it's gonna bring cold jars, cold water, all up to speed all together. So you're gonna get your lid on, and you, you before you start this, when you're doing your prep work, you're going to make sure that your vent pipe here, you can see light through it. Um, it's not got anything blocking that. You're going to uh, get the rim of your canner um, greased up if it needs to be. Every couple, two, three, four canning sessions, you want to put a thin coat of petroleum jelly on there. and. Um, so then you put your thumb screws on opposite, just lightly. Then you opposite tighten them down. And that levels off the canner. That levels how the canner space is all the way around. This little canner tends to, um, it's gotten stuck a few times. It's really easy to undo them though. If you're not gonna, don't panic if that happens. <laughs> the first few times I used this canner, it it was stuck, even though it had petroleum jelly on it. Um, so, okay, so we're gonna let it come up to speed. It's gonna vent steam, a steady stream of steam out of that pet cup. When you get a nice vent of steam, you're gonna let that go for 10 minutes like that before you put the weight on. That gets all the, the air, everything in the canner is equalized heat-wise. You've got the same going through the canner, no cold spots, okay? And then um, after 10 minutes, you're going to put your weight on, and that's according to your altitude. My altitude is I need a 10-pound weight, and then it, once it starts dancing around, you're going to regulate your heat down, so you just get a couple jiggles a minute and let that go for 65 minutes, okay? We'll be back when I'm pulling them out of the can. Okay guys, so I've let my canner come down off of pressure naturally. And then I, once it came down and I took my weight off, I then propped <laughs> the lid up on itself with the little lip up here on the edge. So the, um, it could kind of acclimate to the temperature inside the room. Then I took the lid off completely for a few minutes. Because I've got to tighten the tattler lids, I'm going to go ahead and get this out. There was a little bit of siphoning, which I expected, only because, um, well, I added water to this and bouillon, remember? So, look at that. It's still, it's still going at it in the jars here. Um, and some of your siphoning will actually be where you can't really see it, it's evaporating liquid um, as it comes out of the jar. So we're going to go ahead and snug that lid down. That's a Tatler lid. And there we go. And then tomorrow, after I get them all snugged down, 
tomorrow I'm going to make a recipe with this for you guys so you get to see the end result and um, again I'm going to snug that tattler down um, if you hear any hissing or anything like that especially pressure canning don't touch the jar leave it alone it's not worth it leave it in the canner okay so I'm excited I don't feel like I have a lot of siphoning um, but a little bit in the canner it's fine as long as my head stay head space stays above the chicken when it all settles down I'll be happy 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 and some of you are gonna say well that that fat that came up under the lid is going to impede your seal. I, I don't believe it does. I believe if you've got a proper canning session, that is not going to happen. I've canned straight ghee before, I've, or not ghee, but um, schmaltz, chicken fat. I've canned that um, and, and sealed for years. So you're, as long as you can it properly, you should be good to go. Anyway, okay, so these jars are not Tattlers, and I never tip them, or try not to. I know we say we don't, but sometimes we do. Um, those are regular jars. <laughs> Looks like ugly chicken. <laughs> I even said I don't want to can ugly chicken, but here we go. Ugly chicken can make something good. So the water's pretty clear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you over and show you. Um, there, like I said, there's been some siphoning, but nothing that we can't deal with. All right. Yeah, the water's pretty clear. So if this inspires you to come back next time, see what we're canning up next, see what I make with this, I hope it does. Okay, I got to put a new battery in and I'll show you a shot of the canner. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you next time. Mm, for another delicious recipe and our canning session. Go down below and check out all the links. I've left you links for everything I 